We, we're in a series called Walking the Way, and the key thought has been from the day we decide to submit our lives to Jesus, it should become a walk with Him every day. That moment decision should lead us into a lifetime of being a disciple. And we've been speaking about some important intentional steps over the last few weeks required in our personal lives to walk on the pathway of life, from abiding to God's Word, to prayer, to our internal narratives that dictate and form our identity, to being part of a church and a community, and as Pastor Grant preached on last week, having faith and not fear. Today I'd like to look at something a little bit different but vitally important as we walk with Jesus. I'd like to look at how self-deception hinders us on the pathway of life that Jesus has set out for us and how important it is for us to learn to be more honest with ourselves on a daily basis if we want to follow God's path. Ken Wheeliver, the preacher man, says, being honest with yourself is more than just a tip of the day. It's a kingdom principle which we need to learn to live by every day. In Luke 9, we see that Jesus is sending the disciples out on a brief journey to exercise their faith, spread the gospel, and grow as individuals. But in Luke 9, verse 3, Jesus said to his disciples, Take nothing for your journey that might encumber you. I learned a new word, encumber. For those of you who don't know, encumber means hinder, weigh you down, hold you back, derail you, or obstruct you. So when we decide to take self-deception with us on our journey with Jesus, we are encumbering ourselves. We're inviting things that will weigh us down, hinder us, hold us back, derail us, and obstruct us. When we decide to take self-deception on the journey with us as we walk with Jesus. Research shows that self-deception is associated with the inability to see our own flaws. And when it becomes habitual, it may seem like it's helping us to survive in the moment, but it's actually preventing us from growth. Robert Brilt, a famous philosopher and world-renowned author, said, self-deception is the most common but least recognized from form of deception. Most common form, but least recognized. I wonder if it's because we don't consider being untruthful to ourselves as a lie. Question. Simply put, self-deception is the act of lying to ourselves and refusing to acknowledge certain truths about ourselves, especially when it becomes uncomfortable. And we all know that as humans, we don't like uncomfortability. We also tend to avoid truths about ourselves that we know will create hard work for us going forward. We know if we have to acknowledge certain things about ourselves, there's going to come hard work after that, counselors and all sorts of things, and we're not less. So we'd rather just stay and deny, pretend it's not there, bury, keep ourselves anxious, sick, and depressed. It's a dangerous thing to deny the things we need to acknowledge and face. Truths such as unhealthy habits, suppressed emotions, secret sins, addictions, irrational thinking, insecurities, hurts, weaknesses, attitude, relationships. The list goes on. That's just a few. It's dangerous to deny these things we need to acknowledge in our lives. And we as humans tend to run to unhealthy places to try and ease the inner turmoil our self-deception creates inside of us. Especially when we try and hide and lie about emotions that society deems as negative. We hide those emotions because we want to fit in. We want to be loved. We want to be liked. And we think that if we're honest about those emotions, we'll be rejected. And when we trap those unresolved emotions in our bodies... They create mental health challenges, anxiety and depression, just to name two. It's like an internal conflict that is created, causing stress, causing anxiety, causing worry. You see, when we are not honest with ourselves, we're more likely to repeat decisions 
that are damaging and unhelpful and harmful. We're more likely to repeat harmful decisions than helpful ones when we're not honest with ourselves. Research from the University of Massachusetts said after summarizing all the information and research, they came to a conclusion that all humans have self-deception to some degree. All is in capital. No one is completely honest with themselves because, well, truth hurts. It's not lekker. What I came to realize on my own journey is that when I avoided the truth in my life, I was actually delaying some of the things that I was praying for and needing in my life. I'm going to just say that one more time. I'm not allowed to, but I need to say it again. What I came to realize on my journey is that when I started to avoid the things I needed to face in my life, I was delaying some of the changes I was so desperately needing and praying for. We all struggle to some degree with honesty, as it said, while trying to follow the life maps of God. All do. And there have been many times in my life where I've tried to hide from God and myself out of fear because I didn't want to, I didn't want to acknowledge those uncomfortable things. It's not liquor. It's not nice. It's not a nice feeling. Somehow we've demonized our weaknesses when it's not, not supposed to be the case. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve had sinned. They had made an unhealthy decision. And because of that, they had all these things happening inside of them, all these emotions. And they decided to run and hide. Genesis 3.10 says, Adam said to God, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid behind the trees in the garden. We are the same. We position ourselves in places and spaces to avoid having to see the full extent of what is happening both inside of us and externally because of our choices. We too hide behind trees. We call them something different though. People pleasing Pretending, overcompensation, intellect, perfectionism, performance, projection. Those are our trees. And we use them as a distraction from the reality of what's going on inside of us. The problem is we live in a world where we are told to be honest. We're told that honesty is the best policy, but we are taught through people's actions, words, criticism, expectations, that in order to survive, self-deception is a safer option. We're told and taught two different things. And so we become afraid of being honest with ourselves and the world around us. And we end up rejecting parts of ourselves because of guilt and shame. We don't want to accept them uncomfortable parts of us. We end up rejecting them, pushing them aside. And we avoid facing ourselves at all cost. But the real cost is that we often lose ourselves in the process. You want the safety belts now? One of the biggest obstacles to a deeper life of self-honesty is our own hearts. Jeremiah 7 verse 9 says, The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful, a puzzle that no one can figure out. Our own hearts lie to us, and we automatically justify ourselves and our behaviors and our sins and our addictions. We make them, not, we make them seem not so bad. It's why the person in the mirror is the most difficult person you'll ever attempt to lead. Because we don't tell ourselves the truth. Unless we force ourselves to. That's why we do things that make perfect sense in the moment, but utterly make no sense later. And on this journey to dive deeper within, we'll have a few friends of the heart, but enemies of our honesty. The friends of the heart that are not good for us are denial, justification, pride, shame, fear, perfectionism, and people-pleasing. It's okay to not be perfect, by the way. And I sense self-deception is impacting, hurting, and destroying our marriages, 
our relationships, our minds, our hearts, our dreams, our self-worth, our peace, our focus. Deceiving ourselves, destroying those things. Marriage, relationship, mind, heart, dreams, futures, purpose, self-worth, peace. I've seen it in my own life. When we are not honest with ourselves about our weaknesses and our struggles, those unacknowledged weaknesses and struggles end up deciding our tomorrows for us. That's why God desires for us to be honest with ourselves. King David said in Psalm 51 verse 6, Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being and in the hidden part of my heart. David, the author of Psalm 51, was writing the psalm after he had committed murder and adultery. He was having this realization. He realized that if he wanted to move forward, he had to face himself and be honest about what was happening inside of him and what he had done in the innermost part of his life because he was probably pushing that down. Murder and adultery is quite, quite hectic. Okay. But the words that echoed through this verse for thousands of years were, I acknowledge them. I know my wrongdoings now. David was daring enough to go deep within himself to see what was happening, and he chose to courageously acknowledge certain things about himself, accept and face certain things about what he had done in order for him to move forward, grow and heal. Acknowledge means to accept the truth of something, that it truly exists. It's the opposite of denial. And that was his first step, the most important step, before he confessed to God. David was making it plain to us that God desires truth, not only with him, not only with other people, but with ourselves too. We always focus on, make sure you're honest with other people. Make sure you're honest with God. But how often do we talk about being honest with ourselves? Not enough. That's why so many people are addicted to drugs. You see, facing ourselves can be scary, but on the other side of that, it's freeing. Trevor Hudson, author and minister, who also lectured at the Dallas Willard Center of Christian Spiritual Formation, said, Simply, we must face ourselves as honestly as we can if we want to heal, grow, and overcome. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, verse 3, Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Paul is encouraging us to examine our actions and attitudes and thought life to see if there's anything in us that needs to be rooted out, changed, worked on, faced. But I sense that we are so easily blinded to our own faults and selfish ways and unwanted emotions by default. It's our sinful nature. And sometimes I think and sense that it's been so part of us for a long time that those behaviors and ways of doing things appear normal and right to us, even though they're unhealthy. If you're struggling to examine your own life and you're not too sure where to start, maybe phone an important friend that you can trust and invite them over and say, I need you to be brutally honest with me, even if it hurts. Give them permission. A trusted friend. Not a poll on Facebook. When we learn to be honest in our evaluation of ourselves, we begin to cultivate a habit of self-reflection, which allows us to expose problems earlier before they become too painful to ignore. If you're not too sure how to start, maybe start like this. Lord, help me. I don't know where to start. Maybe that's the greatest spiritual thing you can say. Not any fancy prayer. Lord, maybe I'm lying to myself. I don't even know. Help me. Help me get more real. Help me be honest within. Because I don't know how to. Romans 7 verse 15, Paul said, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I do not do it. Instead, I do what I hate. The apostle saying, I don't really understand myself. Maybe that's another starting point. I don't understand myself. I don't even know if I must turn left or right. Lord, help me. Show me. 
That's honest. That's real. I realize in this whole process, there are many times in my life I've tried to do things my own way. It never worked out. Real change and healing and freedom can only take place with us telling ourselves the truth, even when it hurts or it's hard to acknowledge. We must not allow the fear of hard work that may come from, come from it to hinder us. Because it's through the hard work we find the healing. We saw in Psalm 51 how David acknowledged his transgressions, his faults, his errors, his vices, overstepping boundaries, addictions, and weaknesses. We saw he acknowledged them. And there are three things that can assist us in being able to be more honest with ourselves about ourselves. Step number one is acknowledge. It means to accept and admit the existence of something that is true. Habit, thought, behavior, addiction, whatever it is. Unwanted emotions, emotions, relationship. To acknowledge is to accept and be honest about things in our past we're not proud of, things we've been in denial about, or poor choices we are making or have made. Side note, we all know the importance of having self-awareness, correct? Yes, can help us, self-awareness. It helps us identify and recognize things that are not good for us and behaviors maybe we have to change. But I also realized awareness can also be the realm in which denial can live. You see, we can be aware of things but never acknowledge them. And that's the dangerous part. We can be aware of unhealthy things in our lives, but if we're never willing to acknowledge them, they're going to keep us sick and hold us back. So whatever's going on in your life, I want to encourage you to be gentle with yourself as you look at what needs to be dealt with. You see, confronting and acknowledging our weaknesses and accepting that we cannot fix it in our own strength is a powerful act. It's a powerful choice. It's not easy. It brings our hidden struggles into the open where the devil loses his grip and we can access the power of God. As Karen was uh, praying and preaching and speaking earlier about 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, in the Amplified Version it says, My power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. God's power is effective in our weakness when we are honest and open about them. Remember, Pastor Grant said last week, we can't, con we can't conquer what we don't confront. Number two, ask it. Sit with yourself and ask yourself, Jared, are you really being honest with yourself? Times three. The first two times you might lie to yourself. Third time you might, the third time you might start getting more honest. But we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, Jared, are you really being honest about, with yourself about yourself? Is there stuff in your life you need to address? And sit in the awkward silence and allow God to help you search yourself. Right. Stuff will come up. Stuff coming up right now and you're getting uncomfortable about it. This is how we begin to learn to look inwardly with honest eyes past our limiting beliefs, filters, defense mechanisms, fears, and prides. We owe it to ourselves, even if the truth that comes out points us in a direction we don't feel like going in. We're going to do it anyway. For the past you, the present you, and the future you, the you that was created in the image of God. But so often we harsh with ourselves. We judge ourselves very harshly and we hate ourselves when we act out or have certain weaknesses and you know, we relapse in certain behaviors. But we need to replace that harshness with compassionate curiosity. That's the third step. Be compassionate in your curiosity with yourself. Echoing the prophet Jeremiah, Brene Brown insists, our rational grown-up selves are good liars. To punch through our deceptive selves requires what she refers to as emotional curiosity. When we push through our discomfort and get curious about why we are determined to do what we are hell-bent on doing, we get truth. When it gets uncomfortable and you are tempted to turn away and run to the normal, know this, that is fear talking, that is insecurity talking. And then there's the enemy trying to hold you back from what God has for your life. So to be curious, we need to ask ourselves some questions as well. Why am I doing this really? 
Why did I react this way when confronted? Why do I keep doing what I'm trying to stop? Why do I hide certain feelings that are okay? You see, when we actually take these three steps and apply them to our lives, we begin to practically live out Hebrews 12, stripping off and throwing aside every encumbrance that clings to us and entangles us in sin. The more we get honest with ourselves, we begin to strip off the things that are holding us back. And the more deeply honest we are with ourselves, the better we can manage the tension between our struggles. Because some of the struggles in our lives are never going to be gone. They're going to be with us until the day we die. But through honesty, we learn to live in a space where we win more than lose. We manage the tension better between them. We will never arrive at a place where all our weaknesses and bad behaviors and flaws are behind us. And that's okay. That's okay. There's always going to be a need for us being deeply honest with ourselves as long as we're breathing. Paul Coelho says, an international best-selling author, the only way to live a truly authentic life is learning to be honest with yourself. The Bible tells us in John 8, 31, 32, if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your life. If you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your life. Embracing truth releases us from the encumbrances that self-deception wraps us around in. Those things that are preventing us from the freedom that God wants to give us. Truth sets us free, but truth also sets us up for what God wants to do in us and through us. It sets us free and sets us up. But remember... Walking with Jesus means living with an awareness of the spiritual world and acknowledging spiritual resistance to our godly advancements. The enemy is always looking for a foothold in our lives. If he can get us to avoid certain truths about ourselves or fear the risk of stepping into being more honest with ourselves, then he can stop us from stepping in the direction that God has for us, following his life maps that lead to abundant life, a full of abundant life. Remember, the thief comes to only steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus has come that we may have life and have life to its fullest. And we access that by being more honest with ourselves. As we come to land, I just want us to pause for a moment. It's quite a lot of information, revelation. I just want us to pause. And I want us to close our eyes. Take a deep breath. And I want to pray over you a prayer that King David wrote in Psalm 139 to 23, 24. You can make this an invitation for yourself as you invite God into your heart to maybe reveal to you the places in your life that need to be faced, confronted. God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. See if there's any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious everlasting way the path that brings me back to you in Jesus name Amen